Dear students, today we are going to analyze, explore, and make out the continuation of IELTS reading. So uh, today will be our reading passage first uh, with the heading raising the married rose. Actually, today I've put the whole reading passage for just you, your information. And if you need the whole reading passage by Word format or PDF format, just uh, address your request, uh, email me and I will uh, answer you during the 24 hours with the explained information. So as I told you from my previous lesson, you don't need to read the reading passage from head to foot. If you need to read the paragraphs separately, I will tell you the strategic techniques and hints how you will do that. So for today, uh, we are going to uh, focus on the questions from one to four and it will be true, false, not given questions. And guys, don't mix, don't confuse yes, no, not given with true, false, not given. Yes, it is, this is the same strategy. But anyway, you need to separate these uh, questions, uh, otherwise you will decrease your score. So in other words, uh, we need to focus on first in our statement. So first is our statement is there is some doubt about what caused the Mary Rose to sing. So let's go to our reading passage. And as, as I've already um, colored the reading passage, you will just need to focus on the colored version. So in the first paragraph, the writer indicates that from here it is, guys, I will show you because the rest is belong to other statements. So here it is, <clears throat> sorry, accounts of what happened to the ship Barry while witnesses agree that she was not hit by the French. Some maintain that she was outdated, overladen and sailing too low in the water. Others that she was mishandled by undisciplined crew. So here it is, some keywords that we have already colored before. Doubt caused the Mary Rose to sing. Guys, actually, this is true question. So this is our answer true. What caused the Mary Rose to sing? Here it is very, very obviously. Accounts of what happened to ship and it's very. So let's go to our second statement. And here it is. The Mary Rose was the only ship to sink in the Battle of 19th July, 1545. So here it is actually, guys, I tell you immediately that this is not given question. And I will tell you uh, directly why it is. So what's the reason of that? So let's go to the, again, first paragraph. And here it is, you can see obviously on 19 July 1545, uh, this is our keywords and this is the same words. And here it is our correct answer. Uh, I mean, correct answer to give the uh, explanation of uh, not given answers. Among the English vessels was a worship by the name of Mary Rose. So, a version by the name of Mary Rose. Here it is, the end. And the writer doesn't mention whether the Mary Rose was the only ship to sink in the battle. So that's why the statement is not given. Let's go to our third uh, true false not given questions. And here it is. Most of one side of the Mary Rose lay undamaged under the sea. So here it is, as you have seen, I have colored the whole sentence. Mar most of the uh, one side of the Mary Rose lay and damaged under the sea. So guys, this is true answer. But let's go to our uh, paragraph. The location of our paragraph is the second one. So here it is, Mary Rose and... Uh, line on her starboard right side you know where it is it means that uh, 
one side of uh, Mary Rose. Here it is, one side, but here it is most of one side. Let's go to our, once again, uh, second paragraph. And here it is, the writer mentions in the second paragraph from this one. A sentence because of the way the ship sank nearly all of the starboard half survived intact here it is guys this is as i told you before this is true answer but how is it so most of here it is is nearly all of one side of the Mary Rose, this is the starboard half. And uh, the last, our synonym is undamaged, intact. So it's very evident, very easily to answer. If you know, guys, the strategic, the techniques, the hints, uh, you can easily answer to all the questions. You can easily analyze, exploring the whole statements. And you can get a high band score. The, a, the our aim is to get a high band score, eight plus. And you can do that if you, even you are not non-native speaker. And you can get a high band score. You get a certificate. You can easily to uh, get uh, education in some uh, other countries or required uh, some band score in the countries that uh, you wish uh, to move and uh, even you can get uh, easily the job uh, you dream. So um, to get a high band score, it's very, very easily to do that if you uh, not be lazy, if you have a huge work to do. So it's not like just, I will do that in one uh, month, in one year. No, it's not like that. You need to focus on that. So let's go to our the rest and the last statement is Alexander Mackey knew that the rack would contain many valuable historical objects. So here it is actually almost all the keywords Alexander Mackey. The rack would contain many valuable historical objects. Let's go to our paragraph, to our location. But before that, I would like to mention that this is false information. This is contradictory information. But uh, anyway, let's go to our uh, location. And location is a fifth uh, paragraph. And the writer here argues that. From here it is. So pay particular attention on that sentence. Maki and his team now knew for certain that they had found the rack, but were as yet unaware that it also housed a treasure trove of beautifully preserved artifacts. So this means that Alexander Maki didn't know that the rack would contain many valuable historical objects. But on our statement, it was mentioned that he knew but it's not like that, because Maki and his team now knew for certain that they had found the wreck, but were as yet unaware. Not know. So here it is, housed. That means contained. Many valuable historical objects a treasury trove of beautifully preserved artifacts. Rack, rack, mucky, unaware. Also, I need to color this one. So, here it is. We have done all of the statements. And uh, your aisles should be very precise. It's not general English. It's not just English... Uh, uh, just child English, you know, this is very precisely English grammar, uh, literary, analyzing. So that's why IELTS exam examiners are very, very strict on that. And this is the right case. So the next 
will be following questions and we will make out, explore and analyze uh, uh, based on our reading passage 1 because we have questions from 1 to 13 and I will explain you on that. Please stay in tuned. Subscribe my YouTube channel um, if you need any queries, if you have some questions, if you need to evaluate your writings, writing, uh, uh, writing just one report or writing essays, you can feel free to contact me and I will definitely uh, reply you all uh, during 24 hours. So that's all for this lesson.